This video is dedicated to my TikTok foodie family. Not ever in a million years would I would think my gumbo collard green video would go viral and hit a million. Well, TikTok, you've been asking for this recipe. So this one is for you. Hey, let's take it to YouTube and make it go viral. Here we go. Here's your shopping list. Old Bay seasoning. Then we got that slap your mama. You better not slap my mama. I should definitely slap you back. <laughs> And then next, we got that Padilla Seafood Seasoning. That's that Creole blend. If you know, you know. And then of course, you gotta have that paprika. That's for the color in this dish. Then, yes, smoke and dewy sausage. This is pork, but they also have a chicken version as well. And Cajun, that's what we use in a day. Then you got your red and green bell peppers. And then next, you got your garlic cloves. And then after your garlic cloves, you got your bay leaf. Yes, you only need one. He may be small, but he is mighty. And then after that, you got your smoked pork neck bones. We're doing two pounds for this recipe. If you're not a fan of pork, feel free to use turkey smoked neck bones. And then of course, you gotta have onions. You cannot have gumbo without onions. And then, what's gumbo without shrimp? We'll discuss this part later. And then the star of the show, those collard greens. All right, now, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube. Also, I'm on Instagram and I am on TikTok as well. And then the full recipe, which you guys have been asking for, it is in the description below. Check it out below. All right, now the first thing we're gonna do is smash our garlic. So there are six garlic cloves, although it may look like more, we have some little small ones in here as well. So when you calculate those little small ones up, you get a total of six. So we're gonna smash these instead of chopping them. We're smashing them so we can keep them intact, keep the flavors releasing at a slower pace because I don't want the flavor to disappear and then we have to add extra garlic. And when you're done, this is what your garlic should look like. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get our chicken base ready. So some of you may use chicken stock, that's fine, but we're using chicken base. This one by Better Than Bouillon. When I tell you this stuff is amazing, it is amazing. It adds a tremendous amount of body and flavor to all of your soups, your sauces, your stocks as well. So in a mason jar, I just chose to keep it to the side, just give it a little shake really quick. And we're gonna save this right here for later. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start working on our roux. So what is a roux? A mixture of fat such as butter, oil, or lard, and flour that is cooked together and used as a thickening agent for sauces, soups, and stews. So, and there are three different classes of roux. You have your white roux, you have your blonde roux, and you have your brown roux. The brown roux is the one that we're making today. So, typically, think of it this way. We're using one cup of flour right here. So then that will equal one cup of butter or one cup of oil. In this case, I'm using oil because uh, TMI, I'm lactose intolerant. So, I'm definitely gonna be using um, some oil today. <laughs> So I'm eyeballing it, but the recipe is one cup of flour to one cup of oil. And then once you work that out, this is what it should look like right here. So I'm just adding the rest of my oil and a white roux. That's gonna put you at two and a half minutes. I'm sorry, two minutes to five minutes. Now, once you start this process with the roux, you cannot walk away from the stove because you will burn it. So once you start it, make sure you're standing right there, constantly mixing as you see me doing. So that's our white roux, and then we're gonna get ready to go on to our blonde roux. So your blonde roux, this is gonna run you at about five to 10 minutes to do. So this is what it should look like as far as your blonde roux. That's the texture. And then after that, at that 15 to 30 minute mark, this is where you get your brown roux. Flavor, it's rich, it's nutty with a toasted flavor. Now, commonly used in Cajun and Creole dishes like gumbo, where it adds both color and depth to the dish. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and get our onions and our bell peppers in. And we wanna start cooking these off. And we're just gonna cook these right now until they're translucent. Now, so what is translucent? This is the process involved gently sauteing the onions and the bell peppers over medium heat for a few minutes, typically around five to seven minutes until they lose that raw oblique appearance and develop, develop that soft little shine that we all notice as, oh, it's cooking now. 
So now, after you've got them at that translucent point, like you see mine's, this is where you go ahead and get your smoke and dewy sausage in. And you wanna cook it until it's brown. So I'm just tossing them over, making sure they're all laying flat to get some color on them. And then once this first side is pretty much done, I'm gonna flip them over. Now, if you decide to, to not use andouille sausage and use like a turkey sausage, keep in mind, you're gonna need to add some oil because it's not gonna be enough fat to move them around. Now, once you got that sausage brown, we're gonna stir it all together. Just like you see me doing. And then next, we're gonna add our garlic. The garlic, you're only gonna need to cook for 30 seconds, that's it. And after you've cooked this garlic off for 30 seconds, then we're gonna go ahead and add our chicken base. You're gonna add half of it for right now, and we're gonna go ahead and stir it. We don't wanna add too much too quickly, and then it becomes too loose. So uh, here's a little pro tip. When you use brown roux, brown roux has less of a thickening agent because as you cook that flour and you break it down, when it's a blonde roux, it will stay thick for a long time. But when it's a brown roux, it'll lose some of the thickening properties. So just be mindful of that. So now we're getting the, the whole tablespoon of that paprika in there. That's for our color. Make sure it's thoroughly mixed. And after you've thoroughly mixed it, then the remainder of our chicken base, you're gonna go ahead and get that in there. Make sure it's mixed up real good. And this is where the magic begins. And this is where the magic begins. Now, if you got that mixed in there now, next we're gonna get ready to go in with our smoked pork neck bones, get them all inside that pot. And hey, it's game time right now. So now, once you get that smoked meat in, we're gonna go ahead and hit it with all of the juice that came off of it, or like my grandma would call it, pot liquor. I'm gonna have to show you all how to make some, some real country style pot liquor. So now you're gonna cook this for seven to 10 minutes until it slightly thickens, okay? And then once you're done with it, that's what it should look like, just like that. And then that little fella that's strong and mighty, that bay leaf, yeah, go ahead and get him in there. And then hit it with the rest of that Old Bay seasoning, and also hit it with that Badia, that seafood seasoning, get that in there as well. Give it a stir, and then we're gonna taste it. And this is where you determine, you determine whether it's too strong or not for you, or if that's just right for you. But keep in mind, the collard green is going in there after that. So depending on the size of your pot, you may have to batch cook this in there, okay? So for me, it only took me twice just to get it all in there, okay? So now, go ahead and throw the lid on there. And then after you get that, cook down a little bit, then you're gonna go ahead, give it a stir. Make sure you're stirring the bottom mainly because you don't want it to burn. You should be on medium heat right now, guys, okay? Don't try to cook wide open. And you're gonna do it little by little, okay? And then after that, if it's too thick, pour a little water in there like I had to do because I didn't want it too thick because it gave you a higher chance of burning it, okay? Because remember, as it's cooking with the greens, it's gonna thicken back up a little bit too. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Check me out here and check me out on TikTok and Instagram. So I'm adjusting my seasonings again because I'm adding my greens. And then now, after you do that, make sure you're stirring it. Get the rest of those greens in there too. Put the lid on there. And you just basically wash, rinse, and repeat it until you got all the greens in there, okay? And then after that, let's go ahead, put that lid on there, let it cook down. And then once your greens are tender, the last thing we're gonna do is adjust your seasonings if you have to. And then you're gonna get your shrimp in there. And your shrimp is gonna take about three to five minutes to cook. No, we're not seasoning them because gumbo is packed with flavor. You don't have to add any seasoning to them at this point. So now just ensure that they don't, they don't overcook. And hey, we're gonna go to my favorite part. Let's go to the plate up. Foodie family, if you're anything like me, you're always thinking about what you're gonna eat next. And with the holidays right around the corner, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, hey, these gumbo collard greens gonna hit different with that cornbread. And if you need some other side recommendations, I got you covered. Check out my country style green beans or master the art of making fried cabbage. See you on the next one, guys. Peace.